things just went fucking downhill from there after she entered my life. And this is where it gets really frightening. Everything just kind of starts taking even more of a downhill tumble. Just when you thought this was bad, oh, oh boy, does it get worse than this. We're diving deep into the drama weeds today uh, with a story from the internet's famous Lil Tay, whose video is trending on YouTube. And we're going to talk about all the drama that has unraveled. So if you don't know who Lil Tay is, I'll mention that. And then we're going to get into this current situation that was a lawsuit that she kind of uncovered the whole situation via an Instagram live video. We're going to get into that a little bit and really pull things apart here because there's a lot to talk about. To kick things off, if you're unfamiliar with who Lil Tay is, Lil Tay started off as someone who was called basically the internet's biggest flexor. If you've been on the internet for any period of time, if you're freaking 12 or you're 30, you probably know about her because she was an outlets like ABC where they brought her on to basically say, hey, what's going on with you? We, we see what you're doing on the internet. And then she went on here and told a lot of reporters and people were talking about it. And it, it was a whole thing. She basically just went on there to be like, oh, people, you know, I don't care about their opinions. People can think what they want to think, but I have all the money. I have all the cars. Uh, and she's always flexing that stuff as a young girl on the internet. She was doing that at about age nine. Now, she kind of has this history of going silent and then coming back and blasting off with something huge and then going silent and then blasting off again, which is we're in about the second blast off. But in order to understand what happened in that second blast off, you need to get what happened in the first time for this story to all make sense. So the first time that she blasted off on the internet was when she did the flexing. So there's technically three times. And then she got quiet after that and then came back and blasted off with this fake death. And at the time, we didn't really have much information on this. All we had is that she herself faked her death along with I believe which was uh her brothers so people thought there was like a death in the family and people were like oh man and then she announced that she didn't die and then that made everyone kind of turn their heads on Lil Tay and then say oh man she's a liar Lil Tay don't believe anything she says because of how she was flexing on the internet as I just mentioned and she's always flexing, so she obviously doesn't have any of that stuff. So then she came back, and because of that, so now you shouldn't believe anything she says going forward because she faked her death. And that kind of put a bad taste in people's mouth. So then they thought, well, next time she says anything, we're just not going to believe her, which kind of uncovers what happened in today's drama because now people have a bad taste, and she came back and tried to explain herself and there's, granted, a lot of people that do believe this, uh, including myself, but it's at a point where a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth, so they don't believe the current story that she just came out with. And that current story is revolving around her dad and just her history about what she went through that made her kind of be silenced in those little quiet periods of time that I talked about and why that happened and what she went through and she had so trigger warning for abuse because she talks about abuse in this which is very serious it's like an 18 minute long instagram story that when i last checked it when i saw it live i think it had like 92k people in it or something like that at one point but let's just kind of review that and talk about it a little bit and then we'll get back into some more detail just so you can have some context on this whole situation because this is really a wacky situation still the youngest one out Five years and y'all bitches are still broke. So don't take it out on me. Why the fuck are y'all coming at me for? Y'all hating ass bitches were hating on me when I was nine years old. Talking all this shit when you don't fucking know me. So stop fucking talking. You did not come up. You had five years to come up and you didn't. So don't blame me, bitch. Five years. That being said, let's just get the fuck into it because I have a lot of shit to say. So she has to flex on people and be like, ah, you're poor, I have money, which is not a great way to start what she's about to talk about. This could have started off much, much better than that. Now, granted, she's about to kind of re-preface for what she's about to say right here. But 
I'll say this, probably not the best way to start what you're about to talk about on an Instagram Live. So she did this a little bit after this music video was released. She put out this music video called Sucker for Green, which is number three on trending. I think it was number one earlier. And people have a lot of mixed opinions. People were saying that, you know, her face was done by AI and that this isn't the real her. This was faked. I saw a whole bunch of things like that. And granted, it may not be the most you know, awesome music video ever, but it certainly still is flexing. There's cars. There's a point where she's like holding, she's holding money to her face, middle of a bunch of really expensive cars. So just doing her usual Lil Tay flexing. Some pretty good choreography in this, I'll say. I like it from like the video aspect of it. I think whoever shot it did a good job of shooting it. The concept behind it's a little wacky. Not a big fan of that, but let's just get back into this live, see what she's talking about. Why I've been gone. Five years ago, I became famous and my abusive absentee father, who had not been in my life for years up till that point, decided to come back into my life to take control over my career and my money. That's why I disappeared. He started a court case. He started a court case to silence me so I could not speak on what was happening and so he could take control over my money. His name because she's a minor, he would be, quote-unquote, responsible for her, which gives him a lot of power over her, which sucks because it's out of her control. This is Chris Hope. This is him. This is Chris Hope. All right. Let's just get into it. Buckle up because I, have, I cannot even tell you the full story. I have to give you a summary of it. And she does sum this up a little bit. This This is, in fact, one of the craziest stories that I did not expect to see so freaking buckle up for this first of all this man he was bringing when I was living with him this is all these are all events that happened before I became famous because he had not been in my life for years before then he was bringing random ass women around all the time and literally hooking up with them in front of me I was a child and one of those women was named Shima Ali his assistant. This is her. These are not private photos. This is her this is her Facebook wallpaper. These are not private photos. Oh my god. I remember one time it was the middle of the night and I was awakened by them next to me in the bed. And I could literally she had her hand on my leg. And I was frozen in place. I was so young at that time. I had no fucking idea what was going on. And I was just... So a stranger and a minor. That's that's always great. That's really awesome, you know? We're doing great things out here. God, you just feel so bad hearing, hearing these kinds of stories, really. But let's just continue to hear what else she had to frozen say. Frozen in place. And then I moved. And then that's when she took her leg off my hand. They were literally in bed next to me. They did not care. And they were literally disregarding the fact that I was even there. That's fucking insane. That is, seriously, that is, like, just pedophile, disgusting behavior right there. I mean, it does not get worse than that. That will give you PTSD for the rest of your life, especially as a young kid. You're going to remember that till the day you die. That's sad. He was hooking up with random women all the time, and he found them off of Craigslist. This. This is his Craigslist email ah. to a random woman who had an ad. Okay, this is an email trying to hook up with people. This is my mom talking to somebody about it after she found out about it. Out of all of the random ass women that came and went, mostly Asian women, because he has an Asian fetish, if you didn't know, only one of them is prominent. And this is where Honey Hope comes in the story. So, Honey Hope. Honey Hope. Okay, just real quick. I don't want to make any jokes because it's a serious situation, but... What a name, you know? Honey Hope. You know, Honey Hope, you aren't a shitty person, am I right? But I think it's quite the opposite of that. She is Christopher John Hope's wife, currently. And he met her online when she was living in the Philippines. And she is a career scammer. When she was living in the Philippines, she was scamming as a career, which I will get into later. Oh. This is her. That's her right there. That's her and Chris. These are the receipts. These are, this is just one of her victims. 
This is online. He was a career scammer. So she met Chris Hope online, like usual, because all he wants to do is hook up with women online. But they started having a bond. And he wanted to fly her to Canada, which... So, if he had his profile on Craigslist, like, what are you doing? Is There's, like, apps out there. What are you doing on Craigslist? <laughs> Isn't that, like, prostitution on Craigslist at that point? It's exactly what happened. And she left the father of her son to be with Chris because she thought that he would provide her with a luxurious good life and bring her to Canada and all that. Things just went fucking downhill from there after she entered my life. And this is where it gets really frightening. Everything just kind of starts taking even more of a downhill tumble. Just when you thought this was bad. Oh, oh boy, does it get worse than this. When I was living with them, like I said, they were still doing the most out-of-pocket sexual shit in front of me. She would get out of the shower and she wouldn't even put clothes on. And they were always playing these sexually inappropriate movies in front of me, openly in front of me. So that's what, that was the norms. Those were the norms in this household. It's fucking sick. And... Okay, trigger warning for any people that are like sensitive to this subject, just letting you know now. She would always take out her anger onto me. I... If her son did anything wrong, it would become my fault. And she, she punched me, she pinched me, pinching me was a really big thing. Chris mainly shoved me and this is one of the worst incidents that happened. Oh. This is a police report. They were physically abusing me constantly. And like I said, if her son acted out of line, she would use me as a scapegoat and take it out on me. And in fact, physical abuse of me was so common in this household that her son caught onto it and he, he was doing it to me too. And they would just egg him on. Power to her for coming out and telling this story because it is like I said, it's very hard for her to tell this story in the situation that she was in where people thought she was a liar. Uh, when it turns out that actually her dad was the one that was putting this out there that she faked her death, and it turns out that it wasn't her, but everyone had thought it was her, and people thought she was just like a huge liar for this, so let's continue to see what else. They forced me to watch many horror movies when I was in their house. One of them was Bride of Chucky, and I was, when they put it on, I couldn't get out of the room, and I was literally sobbing and I tried to put my face into a pillow when they were playing the horror movie in front of me. And Honey Hope, she had me in a chokehold so I couldn't escape. And I had to sit through the entire Bride of Chucky movie when I was young as fuck. And then afterwards, there's a closet in their room. So while I was still in the chokehold, she put me, she shoved me into the closet and locked me in there. And she said, go play with Chucky. I thought I was going to die. I was scared as fuck. This traumatized me. They are sick. That sounds like a terrible nightmare. Like a, a nightmare from hell. That's like real life for her. That's nuts. Sick ass people. This is not the only horror movie that I watched, but this is one of the most traumatizing memories that I have is Bride of Chucky. They were feeding me the most disgusting ass food. Look at this. What? Dude, at this point, I just hope she got to freaking drink water around these two people. You know what I mean? It's like they were looking for every single possible angle. They could possibly yank anything slightly normal or any regular everyday activity they could from her to make her life worse and worse and worse by the minute. Like, at this Is point. This, shit? this is what they were packing me for lunch. My mom had discovered that they were packing me this bullshit for lunch. Rotten, frozen, parasitic, moldy, 
Look at this. Who? That's candy. That's expired candy. These are my mom's text messages to him. Sending him these photos and like, why are you sending this to your child for school? This is, these are the text messages. This is him saying he discovered that my mom was sending me lunches after she found out that I, I was being given rotten food at his place. So she started dropping me off fresh lunches at school. And then what does he say? He says, if she continues doing that, he will continue to deduct child support. And my mom was like, what are you talking about? Because how am I supposed to eat what he's giving me? That Look at that fuck shit. What is that? She was giving me fresh homemade food and he was getting angry at her for doing that because I wasn't eating it. But I wasn't eating it anyways because that's disgusting. Oh my God, dude. They did not dress me properly. These are shoes I was wearing. The soles are broken. This is another, these aren't even the same pair of shoes. Look, both of these soles are broken. These this part of it sucks, uh, but it's not the worst. Like she's got through some of the worst of it already, but there's there are, there are worse parts about this. But in the grand scheme of things, I'll say this. The shoe thing is not that big of a deal. Like people walk around with shoes like this, you know what I mean? These are the clothing they were providing for me. Meanwhile, meanwhile, he was so preoccupied while I was wearing broken ass shoes. He was so preoccupied with providing Honey Hope, his wife, with these designer bags. That's like one, two, three, four, five, six of those bags. He was just juicing her up with giving her all the money when she didn't need any of the money. She They needed to put the money into giving her proper clothes. You know, you know, if she, she can, if they can afford these bags, they can certainly afford normal clothes. So when you look at the shoe situation, it's like, yeah, she they could have bought her better shoes. But when you're talking about wearing those shoes around, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. But when you pull this example out, then it seems like a much worse deal. This is not even everything. This is not accounting for shoes, clothing, makeup, luxury vacations. He was literally fulfilling all of her fantasies while I was wearing those broken ass shoes. This is her collection of bags. Look, this is not even all of it. I've seen more, I've seen more. She's open. This is her TikTok. This is just like straight up like child abuse, basically, is what she's describing. And the fact that they just kind of put her off to the side and let her go on her own and not really give a shit about her is pretty sad. She's openly bragging about her fucking designer collection of bags. Meanwhile, what the fuck was I wearing at their house? This shows you what type of person Chris Hope is. You will provide this immoral, horrifying, gold digging bitch with all of her fantasies, everything, and you can't even put proper shoes onto your own child. And that brings me to my next point. How much fucking money does he owe me? Good ass question. He owes me $250,000. He was taking all of her money, basically, and now he owes her. That's effed up brother child support he still owes it by the way he still hasn't paid it he's legally obligated to pay it he hasn't paid it what does that tell you about him that tells you everything now if we go back to this situation here there was a point in which there was a gofundme uh in 2021 that said little tay will be fighting for her life and freedom starting april 23rd 2021 tay is in desperate need of funds in support of her fight against her abusive father as a result of the situation she has been in a state of depression. All funds will go towards Tay's legal fees and give her the fighting chance. There was $17,000 that was raised uh, originally for this situation for her. But I think now that, that the situation, this was 2021. So obviously the time has gone on. More money has been taken. There's money from court. There's things like that. Money has added up. I'm, I'm going to assume that you know what she's saying is accurate. And that's the amount of money he probably owes. Who the fuck owes $250,000 in child support? 
That's insane. And meanwhile, look at what the fuck they're doing. They're going on vacation. They're going on shopping sprees and they're neglecting all of my needs. And worse, they're not just neglecting me. They were abusing the fuck out of me every single day that I was in their home. Obviously, things didn't just happen suddenly. Chris Hope has a history before I was even born, before I was at his residence with his wife and they were abusing me, he was abusing my mom. He was a domestic abuser. I witnessed him shoving my mom into walls and punching her and my brother, he was a kid at that time too. And when he tried to go help my mom, he screamed for help. He shoved the, he shoved into the fucking floor, kneeled on his back. This guy needs to be arrested, dude. This is like a lot. This is a lot of trauma inducing on a lot of people. At what point is he just gonna get arrested? He needs to be. This is insane. And he's, he's like, get the fuck off of me. And my mom was screaming and crying. And I cannot forget those memories. And remember that I am giving you a summary of what my life was like. I cannot possibly tell you every single incident that happened. I am summarizing what my childhood was like. But it doesn't end there because he's racist as fuck. Do you know one of the reasons that he said to the court that he should have custody of me after I became famous? He said it was because my mom was letting me associate with black and Hispanic people in the entertainment industry. And he said that he, they were going to get me into drugs or they were gonna steal my money or they're gonna exploit me. He hates black and Hispanic people. That was one of his arguments of why I shouldn't be in the entertainment industry. In reality, we all know that was a lie anyway because he wanted me to be there so he could take my money. He just wanted control over my career. That's why he started this court case after years of not seeing me and prior to not seeing me after years of abusing me. He shouldn't have been allowed to have custody over her. I mean. Especially when you look back at that situation with the GoFundMe when some of that stuff, some of that information was out. It's like there should there should be some sort of governance there. That's that is not right for him to want to take all of her money and chew off of her fame and get a bite of that cake. And I think this is the point at which when I was watching this, I hopped in for a few minutes originally. But let's just see what else because there's more there's more to unpack here. As you fucking know, there's a lot of shit that happened when I was famous. And a lot of that involved media and the press slandering the fuck out of my family, me and my mom. Number one, my mom was not fired. I can't, it's actually insane how fast that spread. I remember that was like one of the first things that came out. Everyone said, oh yeah, her mom got fired. That was the first thing I remember hearing. No one did any fact checking. My mom was not fired. She resigned. And afterwards, the realtor company, the realty company that she was with, after they lied about it, they were still charging her desk fees after she resigned. Thousands of dollars. And she sued them. My mom sued the realty company and she won. She resigned. Oh my God, I've waited so long to clear that up. My mom did not get fired, she resigned. Number two, there have been a shit ton of random ass people, frauds, who have claimed to be my manager. I have never had a manager. All those people are con artists. They're exploiting my name for clout and for industry credit. This is where it gets into the death hoax. So, as you all know, Chris Hope was the one that did the death hoax. He was trying to sabotage me. Meanwhile, he was working with this other con artist that was claiming to be my manager, and they had a crypto coin together. Their plan was to fake my death and then promote the crypto coin, which... Uh, crypto coin is the grossest thing ever. So they just wanted to capitalize off her death, which, of course, when you say that she died... Everyone's going to go crazy because everyone knows who she is. And there's going to be a ton of stuff written up about her and blah, 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 blah. So that is precisely the best way that they can capitalize off of her, which is so sad. That's a sad story in and of itself. Hey, the, ma the f manager, the manager admitted to 
He said he'd been working on the crypto coin for months. These people are frauds. This proves how much the press did not give a fuck about facts. They cared about slandering my name. They did not do any fact checking. As long as you claim to be my manager, they would just take your word for it. As long as you, cl as long as anyone claimed that my mom got fired from her job just for controversy purposes, they would just report on it, even though it's not fucking true. Biggest takeaway: my mom has always been supportive of me. She's been there for me my entire life, and we had both been abused by Christopher John Hope, my abusive absentee father. He is not the fucking good guy here. He wanted control over my career. That is kind of the little taste story all summed up right there. Um, and that is where we are at today with this, which is her coming out and telling her real story. And I just wanted to kind of cover that and bring that up because I think this is important to this whole Lil Tay saga that's been happening for a while. And I'm sure there's more that she's got to talk about, but that's all the information I have. Uh, if you know more information, leave it down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And hit that subscribe button if you like freaking internet drama. That's what we do on this channel, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.